The boxers have been given their instructions. The seconds are out. The crowd is ready for another edition of Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing with your presenter, the boxing historian, Greg Rasheed. to say sweaty cup to everyone out there this is greg rashid with another edition of the shoulder roll virtual boxing podcast and i'm here in thailand if you don't know in bangkok thailand looks like it's gonna rain today but very hot i love that hot weather and happy that you're joining in on the program if you're new to the program let me tell you real quickly what we do here on shoulder roll virtual boxing podcast we do fantasy fights what if fights if you listen to this program you're probably a boxing fan. So I know you sit back and say, I wonder what would happen if uh, Muhammad Ali fought Mike Tyson or if Joe Lewis fought Joe Frazier. So that's what we do on this program. We use different modalities, be it computer games or also card and dice games. Today we're using Title Bout 2, PC game created by Jim Trunza. And we're going to have two fights today. And... In a special fight, the first fight is going to be a special one for the folks that listen in every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Mountain Time on KUHSDenver.com, created by the one and only Henry Archuleta. And this fight has local talent. And who I'm talking about is a little but bad Stevie Johnston versus Bobby Schoolboy Chacon, lightweight division going to be a great fight. And we have a new announcer on here. Um, His name, oh, he'll give his name. So let's listen to this fight right now. Sit back, get your favorite beverage, and just relax and enjoy the show. Go Broncos! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ball Arena here in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, where we've got a fantastic night of boxing ahead. I'm Bronco Bart, and I'll be taking you through this 12-round lightweight showdown between Denver's own Stevie Johnston and the legendary Bobby Schoolboy Chacon. This is going to be a barn burner, folks. We're using the five-point must system tonight, so every round is crucial. Referee Davey Pearl is in charge of the action with judges Ricardo Canlis, Dale Fry, and Norbert Krosh keeping a close eye on the scorecards. Let's get ready for some mile-high action. Here we go. Round one is underway. Chacon opens up with a combination, partially blocked by Johnston, but he sneaks a point in there. Oh, a strong left uppercut from Chacon. That's a two-pointer. Johnston tries to respond with a right cross, but he misses, and Chacon counters with a crisp three-point jab. What a start for Chacon. Johnston fires back, landing a solid three-point uppercut, followed by a two-point right uppercut. Johnston is coming alive here. Chacon ties him up, looking to slow the pace. Johnson lands another right jab, partially blocked, but it counts for a point. And there's a right uppercut from Johnston, another point on the board. He's found his rhythm now, and oh, a huge left uppercut from Johnston, a five-pointer. Chacon's in trouble, knocked into the far ropes. He's got swelling over the left eye now. Johnson isn't letting up, landing a left hook and then a right uppercut. Chacon swings back but misses with both a cross and a combination. The bell rings, and what a round for Stevie Johnston. He's up 17-6. to Round two, and Chacon is coming out strong. He lands a left cross that scores four points, and Johnston felt that one. Chacon follows up with a left hook for three more points. He's got Johnston pinned on the ropes now, applying the pressure. A clean left jab from Chacon scores four points. This is a much better round for him. Johnson clinches to slow down the action, but Chacon has him pinned in the corner again. He's looking to capitalize, but misses with a combination. Johnson takes advantage, landing a two-point right jab, and follows with a left hook, another two points. Johnson finds an opening, landing a solid combination for two points. Chacon responds with a sharp left jab for three points. He's pushing the pace, but Johnson counters with a partially blocked left cross for one point as the round ends. Chacon takes this one, scoring 15 to Johnson's 7. 
we've got ourselves a fight. Third round, and Johnson starts off with a two-point right jab. Shakun answers with a jab of his own, but then misses with a combination. Johnson capitalizes with a beautiful three-point combination. Shakun is cut under the left eye. That's going to be trouble. Shakun lands a one-point uppercut, partially blocked, and follows with a right cross for two points. Johnson misses with a left uppercut and gets warned for using the laces. Shakun fires back with a right hook. Five points. Johnson is rocked and knocked into the near ropes. Shakun's got him in trouble, but he misses with a right hook. Johnson ties him up, trying to recover. Johnson lands a left uppercut for three points as the round ends. Shakun edges it 11 to 8, but that cut could be a game changer. Round 4, and Shakun lands a right hook. Four points, clean shot. He follows with two left jabs, each scoring two points. Johnson isn't phased, though. He lands a big left cross for three points, then another left cross for two points. Johnson has Shakun pinned in the corner and unloads a combination for two points, followed by a right jab and an uppercut, both two-pointers. Johnson is on fire, landing another two-point hook and a right jab. He's dictating the pace, folks. A left uppercut from Johnson scores two more points as Shakun tries to fight back in the center of the ring, but Johnson is relentless, ending the round with a right hook and a left cross. Johnson dominates this round, scoring 20 to Shakun's 8. Round 5, and Shakun lands a left hook for 3 points. Johnson responds with a left hook of his own, scoring 2. They're exchanging now. Shakun lands a 2-point jab, but Johnson answers with a right uppercut for 2 points, then a right cross for another 2. Shakun tries to find his rhythm, landing a right cross for 3 points. Johnson comes back with a massive right uppercut for 3, three points. Shakun is moving, trying to find an opening. Johnson takes this one, 12 to 8. This fight is heating up. Sixth round, and Shakun is warned for a low blow. He misses with an uppercut, and Johnson makes him pay with a left cross for three points, then another left cross for two. Johnson has Shakun pinned on the ropes, landing a left uppercut for five points. Shakun is hurt. Johnson keeps the pressure on with a right jab, scoring two points. This round is all Johnson. He scores 14 to 0 and Shakon looks like he's in trouble. Round 7, and Shakon starts strong with a right hook for 2 points. Johnson counters with a combination for 2 points, but Shakon lands another combination for 2 points. He's not done yet. Johnson lands a huge right hook, 5 points. Shakon is stunned. Shakon misses with a hook and a combination, while Johnson misses with an uppercut. Shakon lands a partially blocked uppercut for 1 point as the round ends. Johnson takes it 7-5. to five. Eighth round, and Shakun misses with a combination. Johnson is moving, looking for an opening. Shakun lands a big combination for three points, but Johnson responds with a left cross for three points and a left hook for two. Shakun counters with a left cross for three points, but Johnson lands a right jab for two points and follows with a combination for three more. Johnston edges this round 10-6. to six. Ninth round, and Johnston opens with a right jab for two points. Shakun lands a left jab, four points, that got John Johnston's attention. Shakun follows with a right uppercut, five points. Johnston is rocked. Shakun is pushing forward, but Johnston lands a three-point combination. Shakun misses with an uppercut, and Johnston lands a three-point left cross as the round ends. This one's close. 11 to 11. What a battle. Round 10 and Shakun lands a left hook. Four points that got Johnston's attention. Shakun pins Johnston on the ropes, lands a right cross for two points, and a right hook for three more. Johnston fights back with a left hook for two points, and a right hook for two more. They're in the center now, exchanging blows. Johnston lands a left uppercut for three points, and Shakun is cut over the right eye. Johnston lands a right cross, a left cross, and a right hook. Five points, Shakon is in trouble. Johnson ends strong with a left cross and a right jab, 21-9 for Johnston. What a round. Eleventh round, and Johnston has Shakon pinned in the corner, landing a right hook for two points. Shakon is warned for rabbit punching as Johnston lands a three-point uppercut. Shakon misses with a cross, and Johnston lands another uppercut. Five points, Shakon is hurt. Johnson is in control, landing a right jab and a left cross, then another uppercut. Five more points. Johnson dominates, scoring 23-2. Final round, 
and Chacon lands a right hook for three points. He's going for broke, but Johnson is moving, trying to stay out of trouble. Chacon lands a left jab for two points, but Johnson counters with a right jab for two. Chacon is fighting with everything he's got, but Johnson is too slick, too fast. Chacon lands a right uppercut, five points, Johnson's knees buckled. Chacon takes this round 13 to two, but is it enough? And now to the scorecards we go. Ricardo Canla scores it 56 to 52, Dale Fry 56 to 51, and Norbert Krosh 56 to 53, all for your winner by unanimous decision. Stevie Johnston, what a fight, what a performance from both men. Johnson's speed and precision proved too much tonight. Thanks for tuning in, fight fans. I will now return you to our Bangkok studio. This is Bronco Bart signing off from Ball Arena. Go Broncos! That's right, go Broncos. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you enjoyed the new announcer there, Bronco Bart. And I could actually see that fight happening as far as uh, Stevie just dominating a Chacon. But Stevie Johnson, I really... It's really underrated. I'm not just saying this because I lived in Denver. I know Stevie Johnson. But the fact is, um, he's like a, bo- I'm not going to say borderline. He's a Hall of Famer. He should be in the Boxing Hall of Fame. But that's a story for another day. But I hope you enjoyed that fight. And that was for the folks that listen in, in Colorado, especially on KUHSDenver.com. And if you want to see other fighters in the region on this program, fantasy fights, let me know by whatever modality you listen to this program on, be it on KUHS or on Facebook, YouTube, wherever it is. I'll be more than happy to schedule some fights on here with Jack Dempsey, who's from Manassas, the Manassas Mauler. You got folks like um, Devera Williamson, Lightning Lonnie Smith, Ron Lau. So many folks came out of Denver and Colorado in general. And I can put them on here, and I'll be doing that for my folks in Colorado. But next, we're going to get to the main event. And this one is um, another another small guy uh, fight, welterweights. And this is going to be Sugar Ray Leonard versus Pernell Sweepy Whitaker. And we have announcing this fight the one and only Knockout Nigel. So we're just going to go down to ringside. Now take it away, Knockout. Cheers. This is Knockout Nigel, your humble announcer, and welcome to a knockout night at the iconic Wembley Stadium here in London, where the tea may be hot, but the punches are even hotter. We've got a 12-round rumble in the welterweight jungle tonight, folks, and believe me, this one is going to be sweeter than a crumpet slathered in jam. On one side of the ring, We've got Sugar Ray Leonard, a man so slick he could sell sand to the desert. Ray's fists move faster than a London cabbie on a clear day, and let me tell you, his jabs are sharper than the Queen's finest silverware. With that dazzling smile and lightning speed, Leonard's got the kind of sugar that won't give you cavities, but might just knock you out cold. And in the opposite corner... Standing in the way of Ray's sugary plans is none other than Pennell Sweet Pea Whitaker, Sweet Pea, the man who dances around the ring like he's auditioning for the Royal Ballet, but hits harder than a night out in the pub. He's got more moves than a Shakespearean actor, and believe me, you'd need a GPS to keep track of this man's footwork. He's so slippery, they ought to call him the Teflon Tornado. Folks, we're in for a real treat tonight. It's Sugar vs. Sweet Pea, but don't let those sweet names fool you. This isn't a bake-off. It's a brawl. They may be fighting in Wembley, but the only football going on here is the kind where their fists play goalie. The referee for tonight's match is the one and only Sir Nigel Righthook Higgins, a man who doesn't need VAR to spot a foul because he's got an eye sharper than than a pub dart champion. So grab your bangers and mash, sit tight, and prepare for 12 rounds of pure boxing brilliance with a dash of humor, a sprinkle of sugar, and a whole lot of sweet pea. Let's get ready to rumble Wembley style.
And the bell sounds for round one. Let me take a sip of bubbly. Ray Leonard comes out fast and furious. Oh, he's in control early, landing a cracking three-point combination. Whitaker's trying to respond now, but Sweet Pea clinches, probably to buy some time to sweeten things up here. Whitaker attempts a hook, but misses, and Leonard counters with a two-point combo, sharp as a Londoner's wit. But hold on, here's Whitaker with a jab, and oh, a stunning four-point shot. That got Leonard's attention like a cold pint after a long day. The two are circling, moving like ballroom dancers at a wedding. Whitaker lands a nice two-point cross. Leonard fires back with a jab of his own for two points. It's a clinch fest now, folks, like two mates hugging it out after a football match. Whitaker's not letting up. A two-point uppercut connects. But Leonard finishes strong with a vicious three-point hook, and Whitaker's right eye is starting to look like it lost a round with a brick. My bubbly is going down my throat with a brick impact as the fighters begin. The second round kicks off, and Leonard's in control, moving around the ring like he's practicing for a marathon. And there's a clinch. They're starting to clinch more than an episode of Love Island out here. Leonard lands a partially blocked cross, just sneaking in a point. But wait, the refs stepped in. Leonard's been warned for a low blow. Oi, Ray, this isn't the Royal Rumble, mate. He shrugs it off, and boom, a three-point cross from Leonard. That was cleaner than a Sunday roast plate. Whitaker's trying to rally, but misses with two big shots. Leonard's on fire, scoring another four points. This round's slipping away from Whitaker faster than a soap bar in the bath. Let me bathe in this bubbly as round three begins. Round three, and Leonard is in control again. He lands a heavy uppercut. That scores five points, and Whitaker's almost on the canvas. He's knocked into the ropes like he's just had one too many at the pub. But Whitaker's tough folks, fighting back like a true champ. Oh, Ray misses two crosses. Someone needs to check his aim. Whitaker's still got some fight left, though. A two-point uppercut lands. But Leonard won't let up, finishing the round with a big three-point combo. Whitaker's right eye is swelling up faster than my inbox after a cheeky tweet. A little swig of bubbly for round four. Leonard lands a jab early on, scoring four points with a shot as sweet as treacle. Whitaker responds with a jab of his own, partially blocked, but still scoring a point. And now Leonard counters with an uppercut. That's four points, and Whitaker felt that one in his boots. But Whitaker's bouncing around, cutting off the ring, and pins Leonard on the ropes. He lands a two-point jab before Leonard escapes. But hold on, Leonard's rocked Whitaker with another massive combo for five points. Whitaker's stunned, folks. He better do something quick. Leonard's piling it on. The Sugar Man is certainly out punching Sweet Pea so far. There is concern on the faces of Whitaker's cornermen. I am certain that this bubbly is not a concern to me as I have another sip. And into round five we go. Whitaker starts strong with a two point cross. Leonard responds with a cross of his own. Another four points for him. Oh, Whitaker's coming back with a slick three-point combination. He's not out of this fight yet. But the ref's stepping in again. This time, it's Leonard getting warned for a rabbit punch. Easy there, Ray. This isn't Watership Down. But Whitaker's on a roll now. Lands a big three-point cross. Whitaker's ahead in this round, folks. Sweet Pea came back strong in the fifth. His slick skills had Leonard throwing at air as he bopped and weaved, putting on a defensive clinic. I will put a capper on my bubbly for now to save it for later. Round six kicks off with Leonard taking charge. He's moving about the ring like a proper dancing queen. A jab sneaks through Whitaker's defense for a point, but Whitaker's fighting back. A partially blocked uppercut still lands a point. The fighters are toe-to-toe -to -toe at center ring, 
exchanging leather like old schoolmates, exchanging Christmas cards. Whitaker ends the round strong, cutting off the ring and pinning Leonard. He scored ten points this round, but Leonard is still right in this. This one is too close to call. I thought Leonard would begin to exert his power by now, but that has not been the case. Let's see what happens next. Round seven is heating up. Whitaker lands a big cross for five points. Leonard's knees buckled there, folks, and Whitaker's keeping him on the ropes like he's keeping a secret. Leonard needs to dig deep here. He tries to respond, but Whitaker is in control, firing off jabs like he's sending out invitations. This round is all Whitaker. Whitaker showed that he has unexpected power in that round. Most fans think Whitaker is a pillow puncher, but he is sneaky strong. Let's see if Leonard will adjust his strategy in this round. Into round eight now and Leonard's starting to take control again, scoring points with clean shots. But Whitaker's not backing down. He's dancing around the ring, trying to find an opening. A slick combination from Whitaker, and he's on the board again. But Leonard finishes the round by clinching like it's a reunion hug with an old mate. I think Whitaker was taking a break in that round, doing more moving than boxing, until the final few seconds of the round when he scored with a combination. It didn't back Leonard up, but made him know Sweet Pea is still in the match. Whitaker's coming on strong in round nine. It's been a back-and-forth battle, but Whitaker's landing more clean shots this time around. Leonard's trying to keep up, but can't seem to connect, as Whitaker weaves through the ring like a slalom skier. Whitaker is putting on a boxing clinic now, which is amazing considering he is battling a master boxer in Leonard. Leonard's power has not come to the forefront yet, but I have a feeling it will soon. Ray Leonard is finding his groove again in round 10. A beautiful uppercut lands for three points, and Whitaker's stunned. Leonard is looking sharp, and he's keeping the pressure on Whitaker with every jab and hook. He's scoring big, and this round belongs to Sugar Ray. I thought Leonard had Whitaker almost floored, but Sweet Pea has amazing recovery powers. I really thought that Leonard would have KO'd Whitaker by now, but I underestimated the boxing shrewdness of Whitaker. Time for an overdue sip of bubbly as the fighters meet at ring center to begin the round. The crowd has really been enjoying the ebb and flow of this match. I have a very, very slight edge to Leonard. He has rocked Whitaker a few times, but Whitaker is doing a lot of insider fighting, in otherwise showing skills that only a boxing would truly appreciate. Many times in this bout, Whitaker's defense is actually his offense. He has befuddled Leonard during the course of the fight, making him miss blows that would have connected on 99.9% .9 of fighters. Before we get to the championship rounds, I will take another gulp of bubbly, my champion of beverage, the penultimate round, and Leonard's on fire. He lands a series of clean shots, including a hook that nearly puts Whitaker on the mat. But Whitaker's showing his heart, fighting back with a couple of uppercuts that score him some points. Leonard's swelling up, but he's fighting like he's got something to prove. Again, Leonard almost dropped Whitaker and again he avoided hitting the canvas. The right jabs of Sweet Pea have hit the target in every round, causing Leonard's face to rapidly swell up. We'll both go on cruise control for the final round. Both corners are acting like their man has the fight in the bag, or will they put an exclamation point on the last round to seal the victory? Whatever the case, I put the seal of approval on this bubbly, as the final round begins. And here we go, the final round of this epic showdown. Leonard lands a massive hook, and Whitaker's knees buckle. His gloves almost touch the mat, but Sweet Pea digs deep, lands a clean jab, and a few uppercuts, showing that he's still got fight left in him. The two are trading punches in the center of the ring. 
It's a slugfest to the very end, folks. A solid right lead from Whitaker closes the show. It rocked Leonard on his heels. Whitaker surprised him with that power shot. What a fight, Wembley. It's a close one, folks. Let's go to the judges. Lindsay Tucker scores it for Whitaker. Hubert Min has it even. And George Smith calls it for Leonard. It's a draw. This fight has been ruled a draw. Both fighters gave everything. And in the end, neither man could claim victory. What a night of boxing brilliance. In my humble opinion, on my scorecard, Leonard barely won the fight. But my opinion matters little, as the judges are the final arbitrators. I hope these two will have a go of it again. I know I am reflecting the sentiments of this crowd. If you in the listening audience would like to see a rematch, leave a comment on YouTube, Facebook, KUHS, or wherever you are listening to this bout. I will now return you to our Bangkok studio. This is Knockout Nigel. Cheers. Yeah, that was a nice little fight there. And uh, if you want a rematch, if you want a rematch, let me know. As Knockout Nigel just said, and we will definitely have the rematch on here. Whenever you want to let me know. And by the way, please, please, just like our Red Sox fan, who was my first Patreon, and others have joined in too, become a Patreon of the program. Just go to patreon.com, look for Ringside Fantasy Fights and News. Again, Ringside Fantasy Fights and News. And make a donation, a dollar a month, whatever you can do. So we can get a better mic, keep the uh, lights on in here, keep everything flowing and growing because this is for you. This is for you fight fans out there and the non-fight fans because I know there are a number of folks who aren't heavy-duty fight fans, but they like to listen from time to time because they like the music because this is a boxing uh, variety show. We'll be doing music a little later in the program, but right now we're going to talk about some current news in the world of boxing and we have uh, Cynthia on here, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what's going on in the world of boxing. Take it away, Cynthia. British heavyweights Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois will face each other on September 21st at the iconic Wembley Stadium, England. On the same card, the World Boxing Council silver middleweight champion, Hamza Shiraz, will defend his title against the inform European champion Tyler Denny. His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh, who has strived to make the biggest fights in boxing possible, is determined to break a record at Wembley Stadium. Turkey took to social media to announce that Riyadh season has requested an extension of capacity at Wembley Stadium for the upcoming Joshua vs. Dubois headliner on September 21st, seeking to break the record for the largest attendance for a boxing card at Wembley. Due to high fan demand, we have requested to expand the capacity of Wembley Stadium for the highly anticipated fight between Joshua and Dubois on Riyadh Season Card Wembley Edition. We are looking forward to setting a record attendance in boxing history at Wembley Stadium. The April 2022 heavyweight fight between Tyson Fury and Dillian White currently holds the record for the largest attendance at Wembley, with 94,000 fans, who saw Fury knock out White in the sixth round with an elacious uppercut. That's going to be a great fight. And I have a, I keep going back and forth wavering. Right now I have a Joshua winning it. A couple of weeks ago I said I thought Dubois would, would win it, but I'm leaning toward Joshua. But I got to see some of the training camp and everything before I make my final decision. But Cynthia has another story. on. Actually, I'm sorry, it's not Cynthia. This is Kendra now. She has a story we've talked about. This is one of my favorite fighters, period. A woman fighter. And she's no longer fighting, and you know Heather Hardy's just going through so much. And this is, you know, just keep in mind, you know, we love the fights and all, but it's it's serious as far as what goes on in that ring. And Kendra's going to talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, Heather Hardy. So let's listen to that on the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast. Heather Hardy sometimes wonders if boxing would have preferred her to simply fade away. It feels that way, Hardy, who had a boxing record of 24 wins and 3 losses, told Yahoo Sports. If I had died, 
no one would have to deal with me anymore. But Hardy didn't die, and now she's determined to make the sport confront her reality. After over a decade in combat sports, including world titles in boxing and a stint in MMA with Bellator, Hardy, now 42, finds herself in an unwanted retirement due to brain trauma that has severely impacted her vision. Since her last fight with Amanda Serrano in August 2023, she's experienced double vision and difficulty focusing. At first, I thought it was just a post-fight issue, Hardy said. But when it didn't go away, I saw an eye doctor who told me my eyes were fine, it was brain damage causing the problem. Initially, Hardy hoped rest would help, but financial pressures forced her back into training. Despite warnings from doctors to avoid further head injuries, she prepared for a bare-knuckle boxing match, even as her condition worsened. By March, she'd lost 40 pounds, struggled with nausea, severe headaches, and insomnia. When doctors realized the extent of her condition, they were horrified she was even considering fighting. They told her bluntly that taking more time off wouldn't help, she needed to stop boxing altogether. While she continues to work at Gleason's gym in Brooklyn, even simple tasks have become challenging due to her vision issues. She feels abandoned by the promoters who once profited from her fights. Some days, my vision isn't as bad, so I can ride the city bike to work, Hardy said. But when it's really bad, I can't. I'll fall off. I've got scars on my arms from burning myself on the oven. I just thought it was because I was being dumb, but it was because I couldn't see. I've got a scar on my face from falling down the stairs in the subway. And if I try to take the train, I'm very jumpy because I don't see things until the last minute. I have no peripheral vision. I get paranoid because I'm looking around and then, bam, someone is right next to me. I feel like I gave my body and my sight to pay someone else's bills. Hardy said. Now I'm disabled and just need some help, but where are they? My career is over, so why should I care if Lou DeBella looks bad? DeBella, who promoted some of Hardy's fights, expressed support for her and frustration over the lack of fair opportunities for women in boxing. Bruce Silverglade, president of Gleason's Gym, noted that Hardy's situation isn't new in boxing, but it's relatively new for women. This has happened to men in boxing for years, but now the top women fighters are reaching the point where they have to retire, Silverglade said. He emphasized the need for a national regulatory body to support retired fighters, noting that other sports have unions that provide pensions and health care, something boxers lack. I mean, that's awful. We're, we're in the 21st century now, and fighting, professional fighting as we know it, uh, started in the late 19th century with the, you know, the, the official rules of boxing, the Marcus of Queensbury rules, and we still don't have a union, a commission that will do anything to help the fighters. And Heather Hardy, she gave her heart to boxing. If you ever seen her fight, I mean, she was one of those. I mean, she was like Joe Frazier as far as she's just a a face fighter, no defense but action, action. And she was just really a champion, really a great person, a champion inside and outside of the ring. And to hear what's going on with her, it's so sad. But there are so many fighters that are like that, going through that, who aren't known, who are just suffering. And why don't you, you know, you folks, all you folks out there who love boxing, we, we got to do something. We got to create a commission to do something some way to let these folks know that this is serious. You know, people, promoters are getting money. They're sitting back, as Heather Hardy said, and they're, they're filling their pockets up. But the fighters, they're not making it. They're not making it. So we got to do something. We really got to do something. Hopefully, in, you know, by the end of this year, but hopefully next year, 2025, there will be the start of some sort of union, organizing of some sort, for the fighters, so they can, you know, they can live a decent life, get the proper health care, and just, you know, live normally. They've given their blood, their souls in the ring, and 
we got to give them something back. We got to show that we really care. And that's, you know, that's what I want to see with this show more than anything. To see just some regulations. I hope that will happen next year. Hope it'll happen next week. It will could, but we'll see. But do what you can. Wherever you are listening to this program, do what you can to see if we can make some changes. But right now, we're going to switch gears again. We have Cynthia come back on. And she's going to give us a little bit of boxing history for the week of September 1st through the 7th. So let's hear that on the shoulder roll virtual boxing podcast. Here is your boxing history for September 1st to 7th. September 1st, 1973. George Foreman retained his world heavyweight title with a first-round knockout over Jose Roman. September 2nd, 2016. Bleed for This was released, an American biographical sports film directed by Ben Younger on the life of former world champion Vinny Pazienza. September 3rd, 1906. Joe Gans defeated Battling Nelson via disqualification in round 42 to regain the world lightweight title. September 4, 2010. Ricky Burns gave Roman Martinez his first defeat and won the WBO super featherweight title. September 5, 1960. Muhammad Ali, then Cassius Clay, won gold at the Summer Olympics in Rome in the light heavyweight division. September 6, 1920. Jack Dempsey defeated Billy Misk in three rounds for the heavyweight title in the first radio broadcast of a prize fight. September 7, 1996. Mike Tyson defeated Bruce Seldon in one round for the WBA heavyweight title, unifying it with the WBC heavyweight title he already held. American rapper Tupac Shakur watched the fight but was fatally shot later that night. That was a sad night, you know, very sad. Thank you, Cynthia, for that, but yeah. Yeah, Tupac was murdered that night, and they're still, they may have found a murderer now, but there's still so much mystery in that. With all these assassinations, there's always, and that's what it was, assassination. And it just, you know, hopefully the truth will come out of this eventually. They've, they've got one guy, but there's more to it. You know, I don't know if he's a patsy or what, but there's more to that. But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. On the program today, we're going to switch gears now, and we're going to do the music segment of the program. I hope you like the music, because a lot of people, they discover new music when they listen to this program that they've never heard. And we're going to start out today with, um, we're going to do this one, um, I think we will do Road Trip. And this is by a guy named, he's out of Canada. He calls himself Slink. And so let's hear this. On the Shoulder Roll Virtual Boxing Podcast.
Right. I want to do that one again. No, I better not. But anyway, that was Freedom Trail Studio, and that was The Current Blues. And before that, we did DJ Williams and Frank's Last Chance. And then we did the set started off with Slink, and that's spelled S-L-Y-N-K. And that was Road Trip. I hope you enjoyed that music on the show, the Roll virtual boxing podcast, as well as enjoy the fights we had on today. A little bit bad, Stevie Johnston versus Bobby Chacon, as for well, our fans out there in Colorado. And then the main event, Sugar Ray Leonard versus Sweet P, Pernell Whitaker. And if you want to see a rematch of them, just let me know. But we're going to get ready to get out of here right now. As I always say, go in love and go in peace. Help someone along the way, wherever you are. And remember, when you wake up in the morning, get up, go to that mirror, give yourself a big hug and say, I love myself. And if you're sight impaired, get up, hug yourself and say, I love myself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't do anything. You can't help anyone. You can't do anything because you don't love yourself. Love yourself first and then go out in that community, wherever you are in this world in this universe, it helps someone, be it a young person, a senior, an animal in need, whatever. Find out who your next door neighbors are and just ask if they need any help because you never know. You never know what's going on. So do what you can and make this sphere that we're on a better place. There's so much going on, as you know, in the world. All these wars and rumors of wars, all the, you know, the elections. We got an election over here. We had an election in Thailand over here um, a year ago, but there have been some changes. I'm not going to get into that on this program, but anyway, there's so much that's going on, but do what you can to make the world better. And do, you know, by doing that, it'll just be a better place. And it sounds maudlin. I know for some of you think, oh, that's, that's just so wimpy and sappy. No, it's not. Do what you can to make it a better place. And also, Do what you can, whatever you can do to bring some improvements to boxing as far as getting it unionized and getting these fighters their due. A lot of them make a lot of money, but a lot of them lose their money. But a lot of fighters, majority of fighters out there are club fighters or they're preliminary fighters that never make it big. And they struggle. They really struggle. So do what you can. Let's see in next year, hopefully by next year, there will be some sort of unionized commission that will help these boxers. But again, this is Greg Rashid. Go in love and go in peace. We'll see you next time on the show to roll virtual boxing podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thanks and have a great day.